This movie gets four and a half bananas out of five, according to Stinky Monkey's website. I can't oversell this movie. It had me in stitches right from the opening quote. George W. Bush's infamous, Families is where our nation finds hope, where wings take dreams. In George W. Bush, we find where Will Ferrell and John C. Riley get their inspiration for retardation. I cracked up at the quote, and a lady next to me said to her kids, I still don't know what's, why that's funny. Ironically, what I got from her is that this movie is good enough that people are seeing it a second time. I'm sure you know the premise. Two guys who are at or near 40 live with their single parents, and when their parents decide to marry each other, these boys are forced to move in with them in the same room, and they hate each other just because they feel they should. But one of the early priceless moments comes at dinner when Farrell makes fun of Riley, and Riley says something along the lines of, that's so funny I forgot to laugh. But he butchers the comeback, and still Farrell gets so upset that his face breaks down on the verge of tears. There are a few moments in this film where grown men crying is played for huge laughs. The man-child is a growing phenomenon in this country, and I certainly know enough guys who come close to this category. The therapist in the film likens the ideal of grown men living with their parents and not supporting themselves to an addiction, and the parents are enablers. The parents are well-intentioned, but are crippling their children by not forcing them to grow up and sprout their own wings. But these are heavier issues than this film cares to deal with. Instead, they prefer to watch as two grown men sleepwalk like eight-year-olds and tear the house to shit when they get in their fights. Tossing the decorated Christmas tree on their parents' bed was one milk-snorting surprise. If the movie is 92 minutes long, I'd say there are at least 110 good jokes. When the father is so fed up with the boys that he threatens to sell the house, Farrell asks quietly, Why? Is it haunted? <laughs> Sometimes it feels like these. The lead actor is so funny and everyone else is just fodder for his humor. But there is plenty of funny to go around here. Riley is very much Farrell's equal. He's a truly great actor who's been nominated for Oscars and gotten tons of street credit in Hollywood. But people love him most for his dopey role in Farrell's Talladega Nights. In Talladega Nights, it's good, but it can't hold a candle to the Step Brothers. Riley and Farrell are now so in sync, they're the comedy equivalent of Robert Plant and Jerry Page on Led Zeppelin 2. 61-year-old Richard Jenkins, who played Ben Stiller's disinterested psychiatrist from There's Something About Mary, gets funnier with each movie, this time as Riley's father, Dr. Robert Dobach. When Riley good-naturedly asks if they could double-team the new mom, Dobach looks like he's going to have a stroke. Adam Scott, as Farrell's super successful brother Derek, is like a post-Oprah Tom Cruise, filled with nutty narcissism and needs a punch-in-the-face good looks. At Christmas dinner, he brags in front of his kids about blowing a .079 on the breathalyzer, thus beating the cop at his own game. His wife is played by Katherine Hahn, and her scenes with Riley are both priceless and borderline disgusting. But the straight person in the whole stew is the woman playing Farrell's mother, Oscar winner Mary Steenburgen. She plays Farrell's stepmother in Elf, and does a great job acting as his loving mother here. As she gets older, she still radiates charm and beauty, and gives the movie a dose of class that it is missing on all other fronts. When she drives him to their new home, he's still in the back seat and talks trash like a kid suffering from Tourette's. Discussing his new stepbrother, he goes, He better not get in my face, because I'll drop kick that mother effer. <laughs> Several times in the movie, you can see Steenburgen wanting to bust out laughing. Oh, warning. I saw tons of kids in the theater when I went to see this, but this movie is rated off for a reason. The language is as raunchy as Goodfellas. But if you want to be a cool parent, your kids will have the best filthy comebacks to throw at their classmates in the schoolyard. Ciao from the Fredner.